Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, apply bitwise operations to make string equal. The problem states that you are given two strings S and target, both are of length n, and you can perform the following operation on S any number of times. The operation is choose two distinct indices i and j and replace si with si or sj and sj with si or xj. Now you can do this operation any number of times and you have to just say whether after applying some operations you will be able to reach target from s or not. Right. So that's uh, the problem. Let's take an example. Let's say 1010 So we need to convert 1010 to 0110. So what they are saying is take two indices i equals to 2 and j equals to 0. So basically i is this and j is this. So uh, and replace them with replace si with si or uh, si or sj. So 1 or 1 is 1. Right, so this will remain one, and j with si or xj. So one or one is zero, and hence this element or this position will become zero. Similarly, if you apply another operation with i equals to two and j equals to one, you will be getting zero one one zero finally. So this zero one one zero is equals to target, and hence we return true here. Similarly, you will see by applying any operations on 1 1 you will not be able to get to 0 0 and hence we return false here right so now how to solve this so as always it is a bitwise operation so just try to think if you are able to dissect the problem into a single bit problem we have solved this problem this kind of problems a lot of times in this channel so just think if you what these operations actually mean and can we dissect this into a single bit problem so Let's start with this. So we have this operation, right? So SI can be replaced with uh, SI or SJ and SJ can be replaced with SI or SI or SJ. So what are the possible values of SI and SJ? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, right? Now let's try to apply this expressions or this, uh, uh, this values to I and J based on this formula. So 0 or 0 like SI will be SI or SJ, right? So 0 or 0 is 0, right? And SJ would be SI or SJ, which is 0 or 0, which is again 0, right? So if initial SI and SJ is 0, 0, the final SI and SJ would be 0, 0. Similarly, if you try 0 and 1, 0 or 1 will be 1. So SI will become 1, right? And 0 or 1 would be 1 and SJ would become 1. So if initial SI and SJ is 0, 1, the final SI and SJ would be 1, 1. So hope this makes sense. Now we calculated this for all possible pairs. So there are four possible combinations, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? Now let's make an observation. Let's see. Uh, what you are seeing is look at these two operations. Are they like you can see, sorry, uh, if the first one is 1, right, it can replace 0 with 1 or 1 with 0. Right, that's what we are seeing. So if first one is 1, this one would remain constant and it has the power to make 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So basically, what we are saying, what we are getting is if there is at least one one in our given string s we can take that one and do whatever we want with the rest of the elements right so for example there is one one here now just take this one and do whatever you want with any of these elements like you can choose this one and replace it with one or you can choose this one replace it with one or you can choose this one and replace it with zero so basically you have the power to flip other indices if you if you have one one at least in your s right so this this is very uh, useful now what does this mean it means that if there is at least one one in our s the answer would always be true right because if there is at least one one 
in our s we can replace other indices with whatever we want right now there is a catch the catch is this one this one should will, will not be replaced because you can see with zero with zero if you take a zero you will get zero with zero if you take a one this zero will itself become one right so basically there is no way you can go from one to zero by taking a zero let's say you let's say there is always zero here right so all all of all of these things are zero now with this one you can make all of the other as zero but this one itself can't be replaced with zero because there is no other operations with zero that can make this one as zero right so that's where we can't change this one itself so what does it mean it means that there should be one position which is equal in both and which is equals to one so that we don't need to replace this one now once there is such position that there is one there is at least one one here and there is one one here then we are super sure like now this one may not be here like let's say okay let's take another example let's say this this one is here here it is zero right and let's say this this is what you want that you want to build now this is also fine because there is at least one one here and because there is at least one one here you can take this one replace it with one and now there is a there is a case where both of them are one and it is fixed and because it is fixed and there is one one in s you can change any other thing to anything you want right so what's the final conclusion the final conclusion is if we just need to see if there is one one in s if there is at least one one in s we can change anything we can change it to anything but the only condition is there should be at least one one in t as well otherwise it is not possible right so there is should be one one in s there should be one one in t now they these two can be in different position we just saw that if they are in different position how to make them at same position we just saw that right so the condition is s has one one t has one one and if that's the true if that's true we can replace everything we can just make s equals to 2 by performing some operations we are sure that we are sure about that now uh let's say there is no one in s so everything is zero right so what you can do if everything is zero you can see you can't do anything like any operation you perform you will be getting zero so this zero would remain zero so if everything is zero the final string can be zero itself so only thing that matters is if everything is zero in t as well everything should be zero then only you can make them equal otherwise you will not make them you you can't make them equal right so two conditions the first condition everything should be uh, like there should be at least one one in s and there should be at least one one in t if that's the case you are good if both of them are not true if both of them are zero like uh, there is no one in s and there is no one in t they it means both of them are zero and that is also correct but if there is one one in s and there is no one in t or the vice versa then you will return false right so four cases let's uh, just we look at the code the code uh, we just check whether they are initially equal this will uh, tackle the case where s is all zero and t is all zero right otherwise we just check whether if target if target is all zero if target is all zero it means there is no one there is no one in t right so basically we can replace this entire thing with there is is t has one one or not like this is the implementation i have done during the contest but uh, we can replace this entire thing with whether t has one one or not and whether this is whether one where s has one one or not and if both of them are true will return true otherwise will return false right so hope this makes sense if you have any doubts in the question please post them in the comment section below i will have to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you